Welcome back to the Student Hub Live event about making the most of your access module. Well, in this section, I'm going to be uh, talking about top tips on Y031 with Sarah Haslam, who is the chair of this module. Now, don't worry if this is not a module you're studying. There's still plenty to learn about here, and it's always interesting to, to learn about another module. Could you give our audience a flavour of what Y031 is all about and what the main theme is of the module? OK. Hi, Karen, and hi, everyone. So my, um, the, the module that I'm chair of, Y31, is the Arts and Languages Access module. And what that means is that it offers a broad introduction to many of our most popular subjects in the arts and languages. So if you are a student on Y031, you will be introduced to history, you'll be introduced to English literature and creative writing, you'll be introduced to modern language studies, you'll be introduced to art history. OK, and that's, there's quite a lot of content there. So what we decided to do when we were deciding this module is come up with a theme to unite all those subject areas. And the theme is a great one. Popular protest. Ah, popular protest. Popular protest. So how does that link all of those really diverse discipline areas? Well, if you think about it, you can have popular protest um, content in history because it might be about a revolution. Um, you can have protest in literature because people can write poetry, which is anti-war, for example. People like Wilfred Owen in the First World War. Um, later in the century too, lots of poems anti-Vietnam. So that's what protest would look like in, in literature. You can have um, aspects of language studies where you think about how people demonstrate, how people use their voices to demonstrate. And in art, you can paint pictures, which are anti-war as well. Wow. So there's a lot to, to come together then. I mean, mm. how, how, does, how do all those discipline areas link then through this theme? I mean, it's obvious. I mean, some of our students will be reaching the end of the module and doing TMA4, yeah. some will be at the start of it. How do students sort of be mindful and think, oh, this is an area that I'm really interested in? Yeah. So what we do, we're, the, the point of this module is to give students as many choices about what they might go on and do later, and also to give them as much experience about some of our most popular subjects at the OU in one short module but students if they're doing it will know that they can rest assured um, and people who are thinking about doing it can rest assured that each of those subjects will be introduced at the most basic introductory level so for example when we when we start working on history we ask we, we kind of explore with students what history is what does history mean did have you ever studied any history before can you remember what it what it was like studying history and then we introduce students very slowly to what it means um, at access level um, and that's the case for all of the different subject areas we, we come to plus there's the benefit of this theme which gives a guiding thread it's like a golden thread that you can hold on to throughout all those different subject areas where you keep coming back to protest so what does pro now you've learned a few skills in english what does protest look like in english you've learned a few skills in art history what does protest look like when you're thinking about the visual arts um, so that's that's how we, that's how we do it and we we make sure that those introductions to those to the, the all the new content is at the right level, but also giving students the ability to choose and explore what they might want to do later. And they can do that through some of these options weeks, can't they? Yes. Options weeks are one of the most exciting bits of the module, I think, because at the end of each big period of study, there's a place which is quite a lot more open. So um, students can either decide to follow up on something that they've just been introduced to, they've had a little taster of, or they can decide um, to try something completely different, like learning a language, for example. Um, one of the popular um, bits of the Options Week is for people to have a go at writing their own poetry, for example. They've been introduced to some creative writing, and now they get a chance to, to have a go at writing some. But Options Week are also like a breather. Yeah. You know, you can just hide and eat tea and biscuits. You, you can <laughs> eat. Tea. There was a lot about tea and biscuits in the last session. Or you can drink coffee. I'm yes, more of a coffee yes. drinker than a tea drinker with your biscuits. Um, but that, I mean, you can catch up. You can have a chance to chat with your tutor about something that you didn't understand. You can go over some notes or a bit of material that was less clear to you. You can finish a bit of um, activity work, or you can dive into something new. Now, this is amazing because there's so many threads, as you say, that run through something. Introductory skills, and you say we need to have this at a basic level, you know, so we're introducing students to this. But I'm also mindful, Sarah, that some of these ideas are really complex and big and broad, and that in bringing together these different disciplines, those are, those are big challenges for students. They're learning an awful lot here um, while they're actually navigating their, their way through the module. 
Sure, they are learning a lot. And one of the things that I think we've, we, we believe in the access team is that the skills that you need when you're returning to study, the access level skills that are really important, are much easier for you to grasp if you're putting them together with some exciting content. So we make sure that the content is exciting and as interesting as we can make it, but we also, it's a very gently progressive module. So the things you're asked to do at the beginning of the module will set you up for the things you're asked to do at the end of the module. One really strong piece of advice I have for students is that you do all the activities you're asked to do because there's a reason for them to be there. And it's either that they will lead you through to an assignment or that they will sim simply help you do later activities. It's progressive. But the other thing I'd say is that you know, when we're talking about the theme of popular protest, one of the first things we do is get students to look at banners. It's, it's engaging visually. They look at four different banners from different periods in history. They get a short video with, with a, an academic talking to them about this banner, having asked them, first of all, what they think of it, because a student's perspective, point of view and thoughts, they're always important and we always seek those first. But then we say, this is, you know, this is how we might get you to think more about this banner as a piece of evidence on the module. Brilliant. Now, we've asked people, and this is your last chance to fill some of these widgets in, because we're going to show them in just a minute, um, why you are studying, um, well, sorry, why studying the arts is important, and how does make studying Y31 uh, make you feel? So fill those in. If there's only one or two things, that's fine. Just put a full stop in so that your results will submit, and we'll show the answers to those in a minute. So with all of this great content, mm. I do have to ask you what your favourite bits are <laughs> and why. <Ooh. laughs> I have got some favourite bits of the module, um, a variety of favourites. Well, one is when we see academics or experts actively thinking and working themselves on something, because that's what we all do when we're learning something new. We're thinking and we're working. So, for example, um, there's a professor who, who talks about her views about Hamilton. Hamilton, smash hit musical, big favourite of my colleague George over there. Yeah, we're going to have to go and visit George in just we one second. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, see, we see her compare and contrast her personal love of the musical and the great music with her thoughts as a professor of history and all the things that she knows about some of the slightly questionable historical um, information that is being presented in that, in that musical and why some of it needs to be challenged. So we see her thinking and working about that on that topic. I think that's great. Um, I also have enjoyed parts of it where I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about art installations. This was not an area of, of, of art history I knew much about, so I like those bits. Um, and I like the bits where, where different subject areas come together. So the protest banners um, are one example of that happening successfully for me. But you'll all have your favourites too, I'm sure. Well, let's see what you said about why studying the arts is important. So it's fulfilling, which is the biggest word here. It has power, diverse, it's about people, artists, beauty, culturally important, basis of culture, informative, enriches lives, enhances, creating, shapes the world, gives us confidence, a wow. true representation. Here, Some brilliant points here, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Thinking differently, form of creativity, mind expanding, um, and uh, history is important as well. So there is so much great absolutely. content there. Absolutely, really lovely words chosen. One thing I would add is empathy. Yeah. I think well, for me one of the big things about the arts is that it, it um, develops our imagination and our ability to empathise with people um, across cultural divides, across racial divides and I think our world needs a lot more of that. Yeah. So that's why I'm a champion of the arts. Oh. One reason why I'm a champion <laughs> of the arts. Brilliant. HJ and George, how's everyone back home? Good. Doing well, aren't we? There's yes. so much going on in the chat, which is amazing. And it's great to hear where everyone's looking to go as well. Jade's looking at uh, progressing to do history and Martin's loving the protest elements mm. of Y031 as well. But most importantly, Leslie says that she's got the same jumper that you're wearing, Sarah. <laughs> and Debbie is loving your new hair. So I think I think we need to get that. There's, there's lots of talk about um, the open qualifications mm. as a possible route forward. Um, there's a question, uh, I think it was uh, Jade was asking about uh, uh, in, oh, Deborah, sorry, was asking about employment options um, with an open degree. So I think there's lots of information on uh, on the internet on the internet about um, how employers really enjoy broader-based interdisciplinary qualifications. So we can yeah. probably put a link to that somewhere. Yeah, and the in career a bit. service they're always fantastic as well. So yeah. we'll post a link there. But um, 
yeah, we're talking about traveling as well. Lots, Lots of people have been traveling yes. abroad to yeah. Japan and uh, Spain and China as well. So I'm sure they'll find these modules useful as well in uh, just putting it into practice while they're traveling. But there's well. a, a lot of love for the module on mm. the forums. Um, Jacqueline right. says it's been wonderful. Martin's loved the rhetoric. Jade's loved the chartists. So, yeah, it's, yeah, really good. Lots of positive energy. That's great news. Excellent. Lovely. Um, so... Going back to the topic um, of, of the, the sort of key themes of the module, um, I wonder if you could talk about the language elements, because to some extent, you, you know, we're really saying this is an arts thing, but also there is some subjectivity and it can broaden towards the social sciences also. It really can. And actually, I think the language studies elements are, are some of my, um, are also some of my favourite ways of um, thinking about getting students into, into interacting with, uh, you know, across, across the provision at the OU. So... Um, some of the language studies material gets us to think about dialect, it gets us to think about accent, it gets us to think about language and power. So why... Gender. Absolutely gender. Um, I mean, one of... Have I got time to tell... You know, I, I say this in one of the, my introductory videos as chair, but one of my most informative experiences doing my degree, so I did language and literature joined, so I did some language. Um, I learned about an experiment in the 70s where people were played... Across the world were played <coughs> different British regional accents. So they were, play, they were played a Birmingham accent and a Scouse accent and a Glaswegian accent. And all those accents, which sometimes are stigmatised and have, you know, jokes made out of them, um, you know, stand-up comedians and so on, they played these accents to people around the world and they told them to grade them. And there was no logical grading system. So there was nothing intrinsic about the sound of those accents. But in this country, we associate them with people from lower socioeconomic groups. And so they are culturally stigmatised. They're not aesthetically stigmatised. Um, so the language studies material, which helps us think about... Um, accent and dialect in sort of hip-hop music um, and in um, various regional parts of the UK also helps us to question, um, you know, our views about our country, about what it stands for and about how language and power interact. And you're absolutely right that that makes us think about the social sciences as well and, how, and psychology, for example, yeah. particularly. And it sort of harks back to that point John was talking about, about these different voices and how we try and yes. represent those. Yes. And I wonder, because some of our <coughs> students will either be approaching TMA two or maybe TMA four, where they have to write an essay. And it's about representing those voices. Yes. In particular, when there is some element of subjectivity or reflection, that can be challenging. So what, what can you advice can you give about that? That's really great to have the opportunity to talk about that, Karen. So thank you. I mean, I think one of the skills that we're trying to encourage students to think about in Y31 is how you present yourself on paper. So this has big employability, um, kind of resonances, of course. Employers are interested to know that you can write. But there are different ways of writing. And sometimes on Y31, we're going to want students to write personally. We're going to want them to use the I. I think that. I feel that. I found that really difficult, but that was fantastic. We want them to use the I and think reflectively and write reflectively. But sometimes what we're doing is bolstering their skills in writing more formally. And that probably means not using I. It probably means what's using what is called the sort of the passive voice. So where you, um, it can be observed that this painting is much more colourful and therefore more effective than this painting over here. Um, so you avoid using the word I, and that that gives you agency. It gives you power. It gives you, it makes your essay sound more formal, um, and it's the kind of writing that we'll expect you to be better at towards the end of the module. But you're not going to be marked down in Y031 for writing in a personal way throughout. But we want you to be well prepared if you're going to go on to write at level one, and and then tutors probably will want to see more of this academic style than personal. But both are important, both are valued, but we're just we're trying to build the skills in knowing the difference and practicing the difference in those two main styles in this module. Okay, brilliant. Um, now I wanted to ask, we've well, touched on employability beforehand, and we were talking about the open program and, and the extent to which, you know, um, having a, a, a range of different subject areas can be really beneficial to employers. Yeah. I did um, my first degree in arts because I loved the arts, um, and I thought, oh well, this won't be of any use. But actually the arts <laughs> 
and funnily yeah, enough, exactly. well, here I am now. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, using it all. Um, but yeah, because I did theatre and film, and I thought I really, really love a lot of this. Um, but you know, uh, it's amazing how useful a lot of these art subjects are, particularly things like history, for example. So I wonder if you can say to people who may be studying because they really love these subject areas, yeah. how useful they can be and how those skills can be really transferable, not only in employability, but also in, in everyday life. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big fan as a teacher of saying, enjoy the subject, indulge yourself in something that you are passionate about, because I actually think if that's the case, your outcomes will always be better. Um, and I also think that in the way we teach now in university, very different from when I did my degree, um, we are more conscious of the skills that, that, that subjects are giving you. And we're very conscious of that at the OU as well. Um, so I would say in terms of the arts, Yes, the ability to write and communicate is, is important in teaching. It's important in publishing. It's important in government, the civil service. I mean, government now, they need to go and do an arts degree so they can learn actually how to communicate with each other, don't they? <laughs> sort out whatever it is they're supposed to be yes, sorting someone out. I was worried about Brexit earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are, there are huge numbers of transferable skills. Obviously, English is my background area, and I would say, again, that, that the ability to... to um, the humanising um, power of, of these subjects um, allows you to go into, um, a you know, a, co um, a career in counselling, for example, or in um, uh, also the law. You know, if you can argue, you can you can you can think about the law. So there are a huge range of options for you um, that career that. Um, studying the arts gives you um, kind of a, a leg up into later, yeah. later on. And of course, as an OU student, employers and, and in fact many people just admire the motivation, diligent um, and resilience that you've got to have to actually sit at home, do things week after week and progress and get there in the end. Absolutely right. I mean, I, I also, in my job at the OU, supervise PhD students, so people at the other end of their careers and they're often part-time. And I cannot tell you how high my admiration level is for people who who manage the demands of caring responsibilities, working responsibilities um, around doing PhD. I was able to do mine full time, but people are doing them successfully part time as well, hugely successfully. And that's the case for huge numbers of our open university students. And it's incredibly impressive. And yes, employers. So if you are an open university student and you're applying for a job, mm -hmm. it's worth having a little paragraph on your application form, mm -hmm. which makes that clear because your time management skills will blow any other students' time management skills out of the water. I'm absolutely convinced of that. Yeah. Perfect. Right, I'd like to finish with some tips that you've got, because we asked all of our tutors um, mm -hmm. about some of the tips that they would give to our students. Yeah. Can you remember one of the most helpful ones that you think we can end on? Yeah, we had some brilliant tips from tutors, so a big shout out to all of the tutors for sending in those suggestions, because they were great. But I think the one I would want to emphasise, if I had to choose one, is remember you're not on your own. Yeah. Please remember you're not on your own and talk to your tutor in the main if you've got any issues or concerns as soon as possible. Yeah. Don't feel that you need to wait for a, a problem to become entrenched before you raise it. Raise a flag as soon as you're feeling um, sort of stress about something um, and you will be absolutely, you can be guaranteed that someone else will have had the same problem before you and your tutor will know how to help. You're not alone and you're also part of a community of learners. Mm -hmm. Your peers, your other Y031 students, 32 students, 33 students are your pals. So talk to them as well, maybe in your tutor group forum or in your module forum um, and you'll find that other people are experiencing very similar things. You're not alone. This is a great team. So use it. Brilliant. Sarah, thank you so much. That's been a really, really useful session. And we're going to be hearing um, plenty more tips from some tutors a bit later, so there'll be lots of time um, to hear a lot more from them. We also have a Student Hub Live YouTube channel, which has a lot of content, including things about the Open programme and also about careers and employability, plus loads of other subject areas. And don't forget, as an Access student, you are part of the Open University, and we have a lot of Student Hub Live events that you're so welcome to attend. So if you see the website for those, there's plenty coming up in the next few days days, weeks and months that you can participate in, including a summer programme of bridging study and um, before our September starts. So if you're looking to progress your studies, then you might want to join us in the online room for those sessions also. Hey, Shane George, everyone at home OK before we end this session? 
we're really happy. There's a lot of love for this module and a lot of people saying that they've um, found out about new and exciting things that they never knew existed. Lots of people amazed by the chartists. There's a lot of talk about um, which option people are choosing for TMAO4 and all of the four options have been mentioned. Um, a lot of love for um, um, uh, discovering the graffiti. Found that was really exciting. Guernica has been talked about a lot. So, um, And uh, some people loving the Friends, Romans and Countrymen uh, activity. Oh, nice. um, yeah, and wishing they'd done more Shakespeare. Good! <laughs> yes. That is a really good point to end on for yeah. me. <laughs> Brilliant. OK, well, we've got plenty more coming up and lots more opportunity to talk, but we're going to show you some videos now. Again, we've got some student videos and campus tours. So we're going to introduce you to Karima, who's sent us a student video. Then we're going to show you um, one of the other areas on campus, the landing lights. And then we're going to look at a video from Kimberly as well before I'm back in the next session with John and Sarah about thinking about evidence. We'll see you soon.